Tonight on 2020, January 4th, 2008. It's a new year, time for a change. But this amazing guy wouldn't change a thing. To me, it's not really a big deal. She would, a successful model who's hidden a secret all her life. So why is she changing it now? He was like, oh my God, what is that? That is disgusting. And he can't change what's happening because when the makeup comes off, this black man says he's turning white. You said, when I look at myself in the mirror, I look like a monster. Tonight, three people with challenges who are making life more than what's skin deep. And the low road to the White House claims that he has a love child and he believes in many wives. And have you been fooled by phony phone calls? Seems like a very dirty trick. The secrets of a tricky business. Plus, looking for a hotel online? It might get rave reviews, but who's writing them? You'll be raving too when you hear the tricks some hotels use. Buyer beware. And now, Elizabeth Vargas and John Stossel. Good evening and welcome to 2020. Yesterday's Iowa caucus results are in, and while the winners celebrate, some people are wondering, might the results have been different? Were the margins of victory even wider if some dirty tricks hadn't been played? Now, some insiders say the gloves really come off. How far will candidates go to win your vote and the White House? Chief investigative correspondent Brian Ross looks into their bag of tricks. When the call first came in to the home of an Iowa school teacher, it didn't seem like a dirty Hello. trick. How likely are you to vote in this caucus? I just thought they were opinion polls. I didn't think anything of them. But Sherry Baith of Des Moines, who recorded the call for 2020, soon became suspicious of the questions. They were very negative. Actually, it was kind of sneaky the way that they were worded. Slamming Senator John Edwards. Some foreign policy experts say that John Edwards planned to pull out all combat troops out of Iraq within 10 months is irresponsible. Does this statement influence your feeling about John Edwards a lot, somewhat, not too much, or not at all? And then slamming Senator Barack Obama. Barack Obama has taken millions of dollars from big banking and energy interests that had legislation before the Senate. Does this statement influence your feeling about Barack Obama a lot? Somewhat, not too much, or not at all. What the Iowa teacher caught on tape was no Gallup poll, but what is known in politics as a push poll. Anonymous callers, the caller ID shows only zeros, who push negative information on voters by posing as opinion poll takers against the law in New Hampshire. It just seems very sly, very dishonest to me. Thank you all very, very much. And, and conspicuous by its absence on the call was any reference to Senator Hillary Clinton. Her campaign denies any connection, but political experts say she or her supporters are the obvious prime suspects behind the sneaky calls. This is the very ugliest side of running for president. It doesn't get much uglier than push polling. And the director of the University of Virginia Center for Politics, Larry Sabato, says the anonymous calls are just one of the dirty tricks on display in the increasingly cutthroat business of running for president. My guess is by the end of 2008, we will call it one of the dirtiest campaigns in American history precisely because of these dirty tricks. Over the holidays, someone played a dirty trick on Mitt Romney, sending out this beautiful Christmas card in his name, but distorting his Mormon faith by extolling the virtues of multiple wives. It shows, uh, once again, that in politics, there will always be personal and even religious attacks. <laughs> grocery store checkout lines. There have been National Enquirer headlines claiming a love child scandal involves Senator John Edwards or a member of his staff, forcing Edwards to issue a strong public denial. The story's false. It's completely untrue and ridiculous. One really good hit, and that's what these things are, they're hits, um, can sometimes derail someone's candidacy. Washington Post media reporter Howard Kurtz says some of the nastiest tactics involve planting anonymous stories and smears with willing reporters. Every single day, reporters get phone calls from opposition researchers at campaigns trying to feed them stuff, trying to funnel stuff in through the public without any fingerprints. And no one has done that better than this man, Republican operative Mark Corallo who says he helped put George Bush in the White House by planting opposition research with reporters. That was me behind the scenes passing the information that was developed. Never saw your name attached oh, to Oh, no, never. 
Never. That's not what it's about. It's, it's because it is public information. It's not... Uh, but you dig it up. We dig it up. Where's the stuff? Oh, oh the experience. There is, there is, there is, there is, there is. Corallo, who now has his own consulting firm, was part of a well-honed Republican team in 2000 that worked behind the scenes to dig up anything that would derail Democratic candidate Al Gore. He's seen here tracking what Gore said during one of the presidential debates. Government efforts, and I agree. And Gore walked into a trap when he claimed to have flown over a series of oil fires in Texas with the then top federal emergency management official. I accompanied James Lee Witt down to Texas when those fires broke out. We immediately saw that and said, he wasn't even there. It wasn't on his schedule. He wasn't there. Didn't happen. You had his schedule? We had his schedules. Yeah, I mean, it's all public record. And it turned into the next day um, my favorite headline of the 2000 campaign. Uh, from the New York Post, liar, 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 pants on fire. Right. Well, yeah. you know, there was no... That, that's a result of what you did. That is a result. That's a direct result. And I know how that works firsthand. Four years ago, Republican operatives quietly passed to ABC News this plain brown envelope. Inside, a videotape of the then Democratic presidential candidate, John Kerry. John Kerry. From it was from a TV program broadcast 33 years earlier on which Kerry talked of giving back his Vietnam medals, something he had been denying on the campaign trail. How many did you give back, John? I gave back, I can't remember, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. After verifying the authenticity of the tape, we put it on the air. But as part of our deal with the Republicans, we did not say where we got the tape. A suspicious and angry Kerry accused us correctly of using Republican material. This is a controversy that the Republicans are pushing but the Democrats play by the same set of rules, too. The basement of their party headquarters in Washington is home to a team of people who don't like to be called dirt diggers, but opposition researchers. This is the research team. The boss, Mike Gerke, gave us a rare tour of the place where his young staff has already spent more than a year digging through the pasts of every top Republican candidate. What are you looking at? Um, just, yeah, Romney material. Romney material, uh-huh. Giuliani, uh-huh, yeah. As a nation, we the Democrats' first sneak attack was aimed at Republican Mitt Romney when they anonymously posted this video on YouTube showing Romney taking some very liberal positions in a 1994 debate with Senator Ted Kennedy. I believe that abortion should be safe and legal in this country. Hundreds of thousands viewed it, not knowing that the poster, So This Is Washington, was really the secretive Democratic Party oppo research team. Do you think of that as a smear or a dirty trick? I don't think when you're using someone else's words, uh, it's a smear. The Republican opposition research team is just a few blocks away at their party's headquarters on Capitol Hill. Uh, we're going into the war room. They, too, allowed 2020 cameras inside this week for a rare behind-the-scenes look at how American politics works. There are already big files on Clinton, Obama and Edwards. The TV is just one component. And communications director Danny Diaz makes no apology for secretly trying to plant stories without any fingerprints from the Republican National Committee, the RNC. It has more credibility coming from a third party than it does from the RNC. That's a fact. Now, with the primary season in full swing, it's mostly Republican against Republican and Democrat against Democrat. For example, they all use trackers to spy on their rivals, like this researcher working for Clinton, who we caught tracking Senator Obama across Iowa last week, quietly recording everything Obama said. Last month, two local Clinton volunteers in Iowa were fired after forwarding these emails, claiming Senator Obama was part of a Muslim effort to destroy the United States. But you know what? It's not gonna work. But Clinton's rivals have also targeted her. Last June, the Obama campaign got caught distributing this opposition research dirt, alleging the Clintons had cashed in on their connections with people from India, even identifying her with the political slur of D for Democrat from Punjab. They, there are ingenious people, but devilishly ingenious people in politics. They will do absolutely anything to win. And, of course, the Republicans are being just as vicious with each other, all with the help of their opposition researchers. So when you watch the network news or read the morning papers or look on the Internet, you see a major political story breaking. You always think... I think hats off to whoever found that piece somewhere of Somewhere is, is an oppo, oppo researcher. Oh, absolutely. I smile and I think, wow, that was a nice hit, kid.
In the case of Iowa school teacher Sherry Baith, who got the dirty trick phone calls, they did have an impact. When she went to her nearby church for last night's caucus, she cast her vote for Senator Obama, the one candidate she thought had not made sneaky negative phone calls or badmouthed his rivals. I teach middle school. I teach adolescents. I would expect that from adolescents. I don't expect that from someone who is running for president. When we come back, they may look down, but he's always looking up. If I saw a no-legged guy on the street, hell yes, I would stare.